All right, good evening. I want to do a real quick update on what, what happened on Tasty Trade today. And they had a great market measure, which I want to cover. It's actually just validation or confirmation of an earlier market measure they did. I've already put it up on the forum. Go to most applicable market measure, click on this one. And today they did optimizing spreads uh, market measure, January 26th. That's today. Um, but this validates a market measure they already put up right here, Mar uh, September 17, 2014, um, efficiency. Okay, so basically what this did was this this showed how efficient you were using your money when you put on a defined risk trade. A defined risk trade is basically like a, any kind of vertical or even an iron condor, which is a golden gecko, or a vertical put spread is, is basically what we're talking about here for beginners. But what they're talking about, how wide should you make your strikes? Okay, so you can go ahead and watch this video. If you want, it's a lot easier for you to do, um, but I'll just summarize it real quick. I'll just give you the bottom line because a lot of you are busy, don't have the time. The bottom line is, right, take a look at efficiency and take a look at your five, the width of your strikes, five wide. What that means is the, the width between your the strike that you're selling and the strike that you're buying to, to cover and protect yourself. So as you can take a look, as, as you go higher, you're probably your profit goes higher, but so does the amount of money you need to put up to cover that trade or your buying more of your buying power needs to be used see from five to ten see that so where is the nice medium for how efficient because you want to make efficient use of your buying power or how much money you have to trade okay so as you can see here um, we want to see how increasing the width of your strikes increase your probably your profit uh, per additional one strike so as you can see here like going from four to five wide your probably your profit increased by one percent as you can see you're increased by one point six six percent from here to here and your buying power went up as well I mean, your buying power reduction the, mo the amount of money you needed to put on the trade goes up as well now they wanted to call calculate how much that addition how much this from here to here for example or from here to here how much that would cost you so to do that basically here's the math they just divide the increase in the credit received by the increase in your buying power. So as you can see here, right, you can basically see here that they found that when the marginal cost was higher than the probability of profit, you are not increasing your probability of profit enough to cover the additional money you are putting up at risk. All right, so here's the last, basically look, one strike wide, your marginal cost is 1.9 and that's more than this right so it's not worth it but look what happens at five strikes wide okay it's still this number is still lower than this look what happens when you jump to 10 wide it's even and when you go to 15 look so that's why i said if you're beginning start with strikes that are five wide apart what does that mean now those after hours so it's kind of looking screwy but um I'll just give you a real quick example really quick and I'll just put on um, okay so we'll do uh, hold on let's do whoops let's do SPY and I'll just do it manually so you can see so right now SPY is trading at 205.45 and let's just do yeah this is March so uh, selling a vertical put spread will be selling a put one strike out of the money Okay, so I'll drag this down here and we'll do it at like 205 because it's trading at 205.45. So we'll drag a put um, down here. Oh, can I single? Let's just, can I do this? Or hold on, let me clear this. Here we go. I'm sorry, there we go. I'll drag a put down here. So we'll just do the closest. Well, what are we doing? March right here. We'll do it, we'll do it uh, at 205. See, see, so this put is at 204. It's trading at 205, so at the money would be the 205. All right, so a defined risk trade is we're gonna we're gonna sell the 205, which is one basically at the money, and we're gonna buy to cover yourself the 204, one below it. So to illustrate that, it'll still be a put, but I'm just gonna drag it to the top right around March, right around what is that 20? What did I say? 204, which is right around. Oh, I don't know if it's available. Okay, well, 203, here, let me move it up. There, 204, there we go. See this? 205, 204, that, that's one strike wide. That's what I mean by this. One wide, two wide, three wide, four wide, five wide. If you want it to go wider, this gets pushed out this way. Okay? 
So to make your stripes wider, see where it says width, closer or farther apart, I could click this and look what happens. It gets wider apart. And then I could move the strikes this way, see? So now it's 205 and 200. How many strikes wide is that? That's five wide. To double check, see this, click this, and you'll see your percentage and see that number there? Five, it's five strikes wide, okay? So that's all they're saying here. Now in today's market measure, um, they went further and they, they validate it. I want to make sure I don't run out of time here. So take a look. You can watch the video, okay? But I'm going to just cut to the bottom line again. Um, here, from slide three. Ideally, you want your marginal cost coefficient to be as close to one as possible. What that means is we take no return on capital reduction as you widen your strikes. When the marginal cost coefficient drops off, it means that by widening your strikes, it's not beginning to pay off. So they go in and they, they do all this. Now what's great about this, they did it with low IV and high IV. And as you will see, look at the five again, right? That's 0.877. Look what happens when you go to the 10. Okay, well, I'll just cut, cut to the bottom line. Here, look. Five, low IV, high IV. Five strikes wide, look. That's as close as to one as you got, right? When it's high IV. When you jump to 10 wide, it drops, right, from 0.93. So this is closer to 1 than here, of course, right? And this is closer to 1 than here, of course. That's why they highlight it in yellow. Look what happens in low IV. Okay, you've got to go. Uh, it, it's just not worth it. Okay, so that's why I put simply put, widening strikes in low IV becomes less favorable um, than doing it in high IV. So when you're starting out and you're doing golden geckos or vertical spreads in dough, Keep your strikes five wide, five wide apart for now. All right. So, for example, right now in the SPY, it's horrible, right? Because it's thirty-four IV rank. Don't do it. But if you do do it, do it five wide, five wide, and of course push it. This is at the money. So look at your probably your profit. You want this to be something more close to. If you're doing a vertical spread, you want this close to more, more close to 80, 84 percent. So to do that, you just click where it says strikes and you just move them. And if you want to know when to stop, if you don't have those lines there because it's after hours, you can just click on that and do this to that says like 84%. See, and then you can slide it over and here it is, 81 or whatever. Okay, so look, another quick review. Repetition is the mother of all learning. You're going to sell the 192 put and you're going to collect $1.43 for that. This, what you're betting on is the SPY will stay above $192 at the end of 53 days. Your chances of being right is 85%, well, for the total position. But if you just click on this, you have an 84% chance of being right. Now, to cover your butt, just in case this drops, you're, sell, you're, buy, you're selling this one for $1.43, and you're going to buy this put for 96 and a half cents. So you're selling this, so you're receiving money for this. And you're spending money for that. The difference is right here. You're gonna collect forty. You're gonna collect forty-seven cents afterwards. Now this bet is you're betting that the SPY will stay above one hundred ninety-two in this green area at the end of fifty-three days. By buying this put, you're betting that the S&P will be below one hundred eighty-seven dollars at the end of fifty-three days. So that's why it's called a defined risk spread. If this thing shoots way past here, you're okay because. You know, you'll lose this position, but then you'll make on this position, and it kind of cancels it out. That's why if you click on this one time, you will see the most you can make is 47 bucks because that's how much you're collecting, and the most you can lose is $450 if you don't manage this, and it goes, you know, hello, handbasket, and, and finishes all the way wherever the frick it is down here. That's the most you can lose. Okay, so what is your risk on your money? You're basically risking it's 10 to 1, okay? You're risking... $453 to make 10% of that, okay? But your chance of being right is 85%, okay? So that means eight and a half times out of 10, you're gonna be right. And the best part about options is if, if it goes against you, you can, you don't have, you're not forced to take this whole loss, right? You can say, get out when this gets to, um I don't know, a negative 120 loss, or maybe even a, a let's say you're down negative 150 bucks, you can, get out you don't have to wait that's closing it at two times what you received in capital basically all right and that's a Tom said that's a good time to roll 
if you lost double of what you received in credit, okay, so that's a good time to roll. So let's round this up 47. Now that's that's the most you could make. So you times that by two. And if you're down that much, right? So if you round this up to 50, right, and now you're down maybe a hundred, uh, you're down maybe a hundred bucks. Okay. If you're down a hundred dollars, right, roll it, close your trade already, and then move it to the next month. All right. I hope that helps with this. Okay. And another thing neat in dough. You know what's neat in dough? I got a few minutes here. This same trade, some people are maybe you folks are used to this screen right here. What's good about dough is um see this? This is this this is called the curve. Remember, you can see the curves after all, so it's kind of broken right now. But check it out. Click where it says table. This is the same trade on the table. So it'll tell you you're selling the 192 put because it's the right hand side and you're buying the 187 put see right here it'll show you you're going to collect 47 cents for a net credit what is your probably your profit you can click on this see there you go right here's your return on capital right and here's your extrinsic see right here so if you click on this it'll show you these three things if you click on volume it'll show you volume for the uh, for the position and the stock chart one day i guess right Okay, and you can change it, I guess. Look, four days, 11 days, whatever it is. Okay, or you can click on, close that up. And you can, here's your IV. So look, here's your IV rank 30 days, not for the year. Okay, and you can compare it to different expirations. As you can see, this is a March 20th normal expiration. I think it's a normal expiration. Well, anyway, there's you can see for the monthly IV rank, this is at... You know, we're, we're at uh, 53 days, so it's at 17.4%. And you can see here's the others. Okay, so that's pretty interesting how you can, and you can scroll down like, you know, here, where are we? I'm doing this one here, 17.4, and you can compare with the other IV ranks. So you can, that same setup we did over here, your same settings hold. When you click on go, though, it'll put it up. When you click on gold, it'll put it up on this chart like this. And then you can, because it's vertical now instead of horizontal, the more expensive ones are down here and the more cheaper ones are up there, right? As you can see, just like toss, right? Okay. And then you can move your stripes up and down like this. See, you can make them wider like this, wider apart or whatever. And I don't know where they show you how wide they are, but I guess you just count one, two, three, four, five or something. Um, I was just playing with this. So I don't really know how they should. It must be here somewhere. Um, oh, cool. I'll just go like that. Uh, what does this do? Oh, neat. There you go. So anyway, just play with it. You can do a whole hell of a lot of stuff um, with this. So I thought that might help. Okay. And by the way, the charts I did share, they do work for futures. So the settings I shared, it, it works. If I type in forward slash ES, take a look. Okay, that's a future. It shows, um, it'll show IV here. Oh, come on. Let's load, let's load. It's so slow, people. There we go. See, here's a future. It'll show your IV rank in just a second. It'll load. There you go. So this formula I put up uh, on the shout out box is fine. It'll work. Just copy and paste for the charts. All right, um, I think that's about it. I just kind of want to make sure I repeat. Uh, if you guys just and go back to curve, uh, I think vertical put spreads are what you guys should concentrate on if you're new because you can see in though the green is where as long as it stays in the green, you make money. As long as it stays in red, you lose. Okay, and it'll show you how to reduce your cost basis. Hope that helps, guys. Have a great night.